What's going on, Clitch? What? What up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Duck. It's your boy, Ross. And we're in the clutch, baby. Hey! Back to you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. A new year. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Same us. Yep, yep, yep. Same yep, channel. Yep, 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 yep. New yep. goal. Yep, a million. Yep, 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 Here we yep. come, baby. Let's go. For sure, man. Uh, we're going to be checking out Mr. Ballin'. The Devil Doesn't Take Holidays. Now, we were supposed to check this out last year, uh, right around Christmas time. But, you know, Christmas time, it gets a little hectic. Mm -hmm. Spending time with family and friends. You know, schedule was kind of off. So, but we weren't able to check it out. But we're able to check it out for you guys. Us. Oh, 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 man, he coming in hot. It's a new year. Oh, no. He coming in hot. I meant to say, you oh, guys. Let's go. It's time to take off, fam. It's time. To, Russ said it's time to take off. <laughs> I meant to. I don't know what I meant to say. You guys, I don't bro. know what you. I don't know, fam. But it's, oh it's, my god, damn it, bro! Oh. He went there. He went there, bro. Y'all caught him in 4K. Y'all caught him in 4K, bro. Go ahead and clip that up. Damn, bro, how you do that on the first video? I don't fucking know, bro. I'm I'm really mad at myself because I don't know how my brain it's the road, didn't it's translate that. And it just went. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I know what happened, bro. You meant it. No, I didn't. No disrespect, but it, it don't. It wasn't. Hey, man, I'm done, bro. I'm not going to dig myself in a deep hole. <laughs> We're gonna check this out. The devil don't take holidays. I'm Mr. Baller. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Cause if you gay, <laughs> demonetize with Ross. I'm sorry. All right, let's do this, bro. Christmas theme story is a stark reminder that there are truly dangerous and unstable people who walk among us. But before we get into this damn it, story, bro, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once a week. So, oh, damn, bro, you, I just want to make sure it sounds like good. Like button to go fishing with you, but when you're out on the water and the like button asks you, you know, what are we using for bait, <laughs> say nothing and just stick your hook into the like button and cast them out into the water. Also, please subscribe your to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into. Right, today's story. Hi, right, man. Oh, someone clipped it. Oh, fuck. It's hell. God damn it. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't know how I fucked that up, bro. Ah. The On the evening effect. of December 20th, 2022, a young woman named Moon Su Ho, along with her boyfriend, whose name was Lee Ki Young, sat at a table Su at a Ho. Korean barbecue restaurant in northern Seoul, which is the capital city of South Korea. The couple didn't even have any food yet, but Pause Moon it. was not even looking at the menu. Mm -hmm. I just got to do it. Asu hoes. All asu hoes. Y'all talk about me being canceled? That's. What is that? You talking about. What, nah, bro, what is that, bro? What is same, that, bro? bro. Why, why would you do that? Why would you say that? It just kind of went well, together, nah, bro. Why would you say that? I had to get that off him. <laughs> For the all the gays. All right, bro. <laughs> She was excitedly checking her watch, waiting for her parents to arrive. This dinner was a very special occasion for Moon because she had been dating Lee for several months now this and she was totally in love yeah. with him, but she had not introduced him to her parents yet. And so Lee had surprised her with reservations to this restaurant tonight for four people. He had invited her parents to come to the dinner so they could all finally meet. Okay. Moon looked across the table at Lee and she smiled because she knew as soon as her parents saw this guy, they were going to be impressed. Okay. Lee was a 32-year-old army veteran with oh. lots of crazy stories from his time in the military. He was also exceptionally good-looking. He was very well-educated. He said exceptionally good-looking. he good came from a family that was extremely successful and very wealthy. Lee's grandfather owned the high-rise building oh, shit. that Lee was staying oh, he, he in. He had his money, money. was very influential and powerful in oh, South damn. Korea. But Lee was not full of himself. I sent y'all 45 bits and ain't no notification. Polite, he was had a total soft spot for little animals. We appreciate that, man. Thank you for the yeah, bits. Man, I don't... Like... It should have been some notifications. Yeah, it should have been one. Let me check that real quick. He had adopted awesome. a dog and three cats and adored them. I mean, this was a guy who was kind of like the total package that any parent would be psyched that their daughter was dating. Mm. After Moon and Lee had been sitting at this table for about 15 minutes, 
Moon looked up and she saw her parents finally coming in the door. And so Moon, she stood up and she waved to her parents and flagged them over to the table. And so they came over, they said hi to Lee. And right away, Lee, he picked up the menu and he ordered all these very expensive drinks. And oh, all he, was, expensive he was, he was showing menu. out. And then before long, Lee was chatting with Moon's father about his military service. And then Lee was talking to Moon's mother and showing her pictures of his dog and his three cats. And Moon, she was just sitting back enjoying watching this. Oh yeah. She could see from her parents' facial expressions that they seemed to really- He like was in his bag, so Walker. He was in his bag. As good as it could have. That's Moon good. Moon and Lee and Moon's parents stayed at this restaurant for at least two hours, just Send enjoying another each other's company and throwing back a lot of drinks and eating Ooh. expensive food. Okay, okay. And by the end of the night, when the parents got up to leave, they were like hugging Lee and slapping him on the back and telling. Yeah, when you get in the hug. Yeah, I mean, it's you, you did there. a good job, bro. You, you, <laughs> you went. <laughs> you showed out in the game. You did. I, what you I approve of you taking my daughter. Yeah. Okay. Tell him how great he was, and Lee was doing the same thing to the parents. It was Sorry. like. He really, saying, they bro, had hit it on, off. Man. But after Moon's parents were gone, Sorry, <clears throat> Moon and Lee, they left the restaurant too, and they began walking across the street towards the parking garage where Lee had parked. And right away, Moon could tell Lee was actually pretty drunk. She oh, had not damn. noticed it in the restaurant, but now she could see Lee was kind of stumbling a little bit. But Moon mm. wasn't upset about this. If anything, she just thought, wow, he was so composed talking to my parents. That's how you got to do it. obviously being drunk. That's how you got to do it. managed to mask it really, really well. But despite how impressed she was with her boyfriend, Moon didn't want Lee to drive them home. Of course. It seemed like that would be really unsafe to do because, mm -mm. again, obviously he is drunk. And so when Lee and Moon made it to Lee's car, Moon kind of gently told Lee, hey, why don't we leave your car here and just call a taxi and they can take us home safely. But when she said this, Lee took it as if Moon was criticizing him for oh, being too no. drunk. And he felt really offended because in his mind, he had just put on this great date and made this great first impression on Moon's parents. So and here she is kind of nagging him. You say what? So ho, you thought, what suho yeah i don't know I why you... soho Damn, yeah you... oh that was a sister you doing yeah you gotta chill bro all right yeah you gotta chill bro. and so lee just kind of <laughs> blew his lid and the couple got in this horrible yelling fight in the parking garage which ended with Lee telling Moon that their relationship was now over. Oh, and damn. He turned around and stormed off to he hail a cab liquor, by himself. And after he was gone, Moon just stood there next to Lee's car, being totally shocked at what had just happened. And then kind of in a daze, she went and hailed a cab herself and went home. And then she just laid in bed and cried until she went to sleep. That's cold. But Moon was not heartbroken for long because the next morning when Moon woke up, she heard a knock on the front door. And when she opened it up, there was a delivery guy with this huge beautiful bouquet of roses for moon mm. and so moon Ew. took these roses and quickly found a card attached to the roses she opened it up and there was a letter from lee saying you know please accept these roses as a part of my apology last oh, no, night just didn't a liquor, go so bro. well i'm really sorry please come to dinner with me tonight moon was so relieved to get this apology letter that she called lee right away and said you know what i do forgive you it's all water under the bridge. You know, my parents, they loved you and they mm -hmm. had no idea about that fight we had. So let's just put it behind us and just continue being boyfriend and girlfriend. Okay. And at this point, it was Lee's turn to be totally relieved because he didn't know if Moon would want him back. Okay. But they were back together. And that night they went out for a fancy dinner together. And then Ooh. also Lee had booked a very fancy hotel room that night for them to stay in. Okay. And this Ooh, is really man. how their relationship went for the next couple of days. Basically, Lee would take Moon out shopping anywhere she wanted to go. They went to all the best restaurants and stayed in the best hotels. To Moon, it was obvious that Lee was really just continuing to shower her with gifts and praise <laughs> and all these fun things to still try to make up for that big fight they got into, even though Moon really had forgiven him. And at some point, after several days of being treated like a princess by Lee, Moon finally told Lee, stop buying me stuff. It's fine. I totally forgive you. Everything is good. But Lee insisted that he be allowed to continue to spoil her. Hey. After all, it was Oh, no. Don't offend him. Oh, man. Boy, see, oh, boy. See where that's, a, going? that's a woman's dream right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, so some women's dream they love that but it seemed like uh moon is like hey no it's, it's cool like you know what i'm saying it's, it's it's we good we we good you don't have to do all that you know some people they would have been like shit keep on going 
See, no, I'm still mad. Mm-hmm. I'm still mad. No, damn well, you not. <laughs> Christmas season, and she deserved to be spoiled around Christmas. So in South Korea, Christmas is celebrated a bit differently than it is in Western countries like America. In South Korea, Christmas is a big holiday, but it's really just a holiday for couples. It's not really a family oh, occasion. Wow. So oh. in South Korea on Sounds Christmas, cheaper. lots of couples will go out on these fancy dates. And so that's kind of how they celebrate Christmas. Oh, okay. Whereas, you know, in Western countries like America, it's, family it's all about here. family and waking up and getting presents from Santa Claus. So that's the difference. Western is family centric and in south korea it's very couple centric it's kind of like valentine's day in the winter wow so on christmas eve that's we told love. moon that he had a very special dinner planned for christmas and would moon mind coming over to lee's apartment on christmas morning to feed his cats and his dog because lee was going to be out running errands in preparation for this big christmas dinner okay. and of course moon said she would so at around 11 a.m on christmas day Moon hopped off the elevator inside of Lee's apartment building and began walking down the hall towards his door, fire. carrying the key to his door. But as Moon walked closer and closer to Lee's door, she began smelling this really powerful smell. Uh-oh. It smelled like roses. And for a second, Moon thought to herself, oh my goodness, this whole thing was a setup. I'm not here to feed his pets. I'm here because he must have planned some really elaborate thing for Christmas Day for uh, right now. And probably it has to do with lots of roses inside of his apartment. Okay. And so Moon was really excited by the time she got out front of Lee's apartment door. But before she used her key to open it up and just go in, she decided she would just call out for Lee because she figured at this point, he's got to be in there. He knows I'm about to be surprised by this big thing. Lee! So she calls out for Lee, but there's no answer. And I'm the problem. Su Young! You, you want to get it out, huh? Su Young! Now, y'all been telling me chill. Look what we got here. <laughs> That's a classic series, but bro. You've been Come wanting on. to hit it, though. You just, you, you it just, it literally just hit me right now. If It's a class. That's a classic movie series, man. I'm Don't do that, you, y'all. Bro. Don't do that, bro. Su Young! Father! And so she knocks a couple of times to see if maybe she can get Lee to come to the door, but after knocking several times, there was no answer. So eventually, Moon used her key, she opened up the door, she swung it open, and she stepped inside of Lee's apartment, expecting to be wowed by whatever Lee had planned. So you gotta leave, I. When she looked around, she couldn't really understand what she was even seeing. Lee was nowhere to be found, but there were roses all over the apartment. However, these were not new roses. These were like several days old. Many of them were wilted and the petals were starting to fall off and the water that all these roses were sitting in was very dirty. But really there were like vases of roses everywhere on every surface. And right away, Moon started to feel really uneasy. It was like very creepy to be in this dark apartment where no one's inside of with just these weird flowers everywhere. And so without going any further into the apartment, Moon once again yelled out for Lee in Smart. hopes that maybe he was here, but again, he didn't come out of any of the rooms, Lee! so she knew she was alone. And so she called Lee on his phone to try to get an explanation for what she was looking at, but Lee didn't answer his phone. Uh-oh. By this point, Lee's three cats were circling around Cut Moon's us. legs because they were eager to be fed. And so Moon kind of stopped thinking about this strange flower situation and looked over at the cat's bowls and saw there was no dry food. They had eaten all of their food. And so Moon began walking over to the bowls when she realized Lee had not told her where he kept the cat food. And so she had no idea where it was. So Moon began opening all the kitchen cabinets, hoping to find this cat food somewhere, but she didn't. And so eventually she left the kitchen and she walked down this hallway inside of the apartment and she found there was a skinny closet in the hallway that looked like a place where you would store cleaning supplies and vacuums and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So she reached down and tried to open it. But she was able to turn the doorknob, but there was something inside of this closet that was making it really hard to open. Uh It was stuck on something. Now, again, Moon is kind of looking around this dark, dingy apartment. And turn on some lights. All these wilted roses. And she's feeling super uneasy, but she thought, you know, I just want to feed these cats and just get out of here. And so Moon just grabbed that door handle and banged as hard as she could. And she managed to pop it open. And for a second, Moon just stared at the inside of the closet, having no idea what she was even looking at. And then she started to scream. Ah! 
<laughs> Commercial break. We'll be right back after these. One messages. of the most terrifying places <laughs> in the turnout. Virtually everything Moon thought she knew about Lee, her boyfriend, was wrong. Uh -oh. Five days earlier, after Moon and Lee had gotten into that horrible fight in the parking garage following the dinner with Moon's parents, Lee had made it seem like he was storming off to go yeah, hail a job. cab and drive home on his own. But in reality, after he stormed off, he waited for Moon to walk away and get a cab on her own. And then Lee just walked right back over to where he had parked his car in the parking garage. He got inside, turned it on, and began driving home. Wow. But on his drive home, he actually crashed into oh, a taxi driver. Oh, that's the real now, footage. Now, neither Lee nor the taxi driver were harmed in this accident, and both cars were still drivable. But Lee actually had a really big problem with drinking and driving. Oh, Nine years earlier, oh. in 2013, when Lee was serving in the military, he was put in military prison for drunk driving. Damn. Um, after he got out of the military, he was arrested two more times for drunk driving in 2018 and 2019. And so even though listen. this accident with the taxi driver was very minor, Lee did not want to go to police and report this accident because if officials got involved, they would see that Lee has this horrible history of yep. driving and he would get in way more trouble. Let's go and so Lee convinced chicken. the taxi driver Appreciate to allow right, him to months. pay him privately for the damages in order to avoid getting officials involved. However, the taxi driver, who was open to this, demanded that Lee pay him in cash. He didn't want some sort of deferred payment plan. He wanted to be paid now. Hmm. And so Lee said, okay, well then let's go to my apartment and I'll just pay you there. Hmm. However, when the taxi driver and Lee got to uh. Lee's apartment, they got in a fight over how much money Lee actually needed to pay the taxi driver for the damages. And eventually Lee just kind of snapped and beat the taxi driver to death and then stuffed his body inside of that cleaning closet in his apartment's Whoa, hallway. And so that's on, what man. Moon had seen when she had opened up that closet. Oh, um, smiling, man. Wow. Who's smiling? Oh, I thought you were smiling. What? I said, wait, where did that come from? What? You was smiling, bro. You trying to make it. Look at you. Oh, bless my God. You're, you're How sick, much did he been smiling? You're sick. Was I smiling, y'all? Because I definitely was shocked. shocked. Like, I'm confused on what Dub is seeing. Shocked is like... The, I was... <laughs> nah, bro. You was smiling, fam. Someone said we was both smiling. So... <laughs> I'm smiling now. I wasn't smiling like... Bro, I definitely wasn't smiling, y'all. That's why I'm confused, bro. What the fuck is going on? That is wild, bro. I definitely was not smiling at that because that's fucked up. I don't... No, we know that, but I'm... <laughs> I'm confused on what he talking about, y'all. <laughs> what the fuck? <sighs> Thank you. You're trying to frame me. I'm like, wait, I wasn't even smiling. <laughs> she saw the corpse of the taxi driver. What? And then after Lee had it. murdered the taxi driver, he stole the taxi driver's credit cards and his cell phone. Oh, and Lee would like, use bro, you the taxi just driver's credit turned card. Turned yourself in for drunk driving. Out and hotel stays and gifts over the next few days as Lee so you kill someone Boy, and then you run up a tab on that person's credit cards and stuff after you didn't stuff these niggas in your fucking closet with your cat food and then you proceed to tell someone that you know is going into your crib hey can you feed my cats while I'm out even though you know there's a dead body in maybe, the maybe he was trying to get her prints all over the place. Maybe. Let's see what's going on. Because that don't sound right. The spoiled moon for Christmas. And also during that time, Let's Lee was see. using the taxi driver's cell phone to send messages to the taxi driver's family to convince them that he was still alive. Also, wow. Lee went out and bought a whole bunch of bouquets of roses sound and put like, them uh... all over his apartment to try to mask the smell oh. of the rotting corpse inside of his corpse. Someone said that. What if the roses was to hide the smell? You're right. You're right, man. Uh, Mara. Yeah, that makes sense. What's that makes that sense. show, bro, on Netflix? With mm -hmm. um, Joe. Is his name Joe? Um... Oh, you talking about... Uh, what's that nigga name? Uh, was it... Is it uh what's it called? You. I forgot. Yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he did sound like bro. If you haven't seen you on Netflix, it's actually a pretty, pretty interesting show. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. <laughs> Closet. 
But this murder and Lee's horrible drunk driving were not his only secrets. Uh -oh. Lee claimed he was from this very wealthy, successful family that owned all these amazing high rises in South Korea, but that was all a big lie. Lee was not from a very successful family. He did not have any money. He basically just borrowed money from family and friends and then lied about how he acquired the money, claiming That's he was wild. this big, successful, wealthy guy. Also, when the police in South Korea began investigating the taxi driver's murder, they discovered that Lee's apartment was not even his. It belonged to his ex-girlfriend, who was a bartender in South Korea, what who was does in the 50s. This dude also, own? Lee's three cats and dog that he talked about all the time, about how much he loved them and cared for them. Well, those weren't his either. Those were his ex-girlfriends. And as police continued their investigation into the murder of this taxi driver, they would eventually find traces of Lee's ex-girlfriend's blood inside of Lee's apartment, so his ex-girlfriend's apartment. And they would discover that Lee had murdered his ex-girlfriend, oh. stolen her apartment, stolen her pets, and even took her cell phone. And to this day, this have been you. sending messages to her family to try to convince them that she was still alive, even though nobody had seen her. Oh, yeah, nah, he's on. He He's on. That's he it definitely sound like Joe from you, bro. I ain't gonna hold you for now. Sure. Yeah, it definitely if you watched you, we don't want to spoil it for you, but he he definitely well, kept their cell phone, tried to yeah, like bro. Before, like, that's why taking pictures with the animal, bro. That's that's, that's crazy. Sick. That's crazy, bro. And had no idea what was going on with her. Lee was ultimately arrested for two counts of murder, and he would quickly admit that he did kill the taxi driver and his ex girlfriend. However, by this point, police had located the cell phone of a missing woman amongst Lee's things, and so they became very suspicious that he might have had something to do with this third woman's disappearance. Oh, wow. However, to this day, Lee has denied having anything to do with this missing woman, and they still have no idea what happened to her. And so that Sicko. case is old. Despite how totally crazy this whole story sounds, the craziest part actually happened after Lee was arrested. Once Lee's crimes were being talked about all over the news, Lee became totally famous in South Korea because he was exceptionally good looking. On the news, they would play CCTV footage yeah. of Lee interacting with that Are they serious, bro? He murdered him. And the only takeaway from lots of people in South Korea was, wow, this guy is so unbelievably attractive. He looks like an actor, not here's a guy who's about to murder someone. In fact, Lee became so popular in South Korea for being so beautiful that there became a real fear that Lee's ex-girlfriend, Moon, would become a target in some way. That maybe Lee's fans would blame her for putting their beloved Lee in prison and they might try to attack her. Hey, However, yo, bro, that's Lee, South Korea did a really good job of masking Moon's identity. And so to this day, we believe she is still safe. And also for clarity, Moon is actually not her real name. That is a pseudonym that we used to protect her identity as well. In the end, Lee was sentenced to life in prison for those two murders. As he should be. What the fuck, bro? I will tell you what Lee looked One like. One of the dude. most terrifying places in the entire Wow, that, that was, was uh, yeah, man. That is wild, fam. It's, I mean, am I surprised? No, we, we saw with the Jeffrey Dahmer situation how people you know, were they were idolizing this guy. Like people were sending fan mail and and people were like idolizing who he was. You know what I'm saying? Sick, after bro. after all the heinous stuff they found out that he did. So I'm not surprised by that. People there's there's weird people out there that are fascinated by serial killers and stuff like that. So Yeah, no, that's terrible. Yeah, nah. yeah I'm glad he's locked up for the rest of his life, man. He deserves to stay there, bro. Um yeah, so bro. The, judge, judging by how do you look, that should gauge what type of sentence you get, or if you come on, bro. This dude killed two people and probably a third. Yeah, prop. We don't even know. Possibly a third, bro. They did. They they didn't deserve that. You know what I'm saying? No. So it's 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 definitely messed up, bro. But he's in jail, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, the chick Moon she can you know move on from that because I know that's probably a traumatic experience. Yeah, you for thinking, sure. Everything cool, meeting the family, the family, oh, we love them, boom, 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 boom. Not knowing only to your find out. In danger. Only to find out this nigga like Joe from you on Netflix, bro. Like, that's wild. That's exactly that's who he was.
Jesus. That's crazy, man. That's that crazy. is crazy. Woo! But hey, look, if y'all enjoyed the video, you already know what to do. Make sure you to like, subscribe. Let us know Ow. what other Mr. Ballin' videos we need to be checking out. Keep on For supporting sure. your boys, man. Happy New Year again. And continue to spread love. You already know. And be love. Catch you in the next one. Peace out. Already. The bitch is from Houston. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me because I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside, they know they can't handle half of me.